Okay, in this video I'm going to explain how I installed my Fat Shark Predator V2 FPV goggles to my DJI Phantom Quadcopter and also to the GoPro Hero 3 Black Edition camera. Uh, these are the goggles that come with the Predator V2 and um, it comes with a battery pack that plugs into the side. You can attach the battery to the to the headband. And with these goggles, what you'll be doing is on uh, looking through each eyepiece inside the goggles. There is a small video display. Okay, uh, for my eyesight, I need to wear eyeglasses for distance. So fortunately, they do sell diopter correcting lenses for both eyes and I've already installed those in these goggles so that I can wear these goggles without using glasses or contact lenses. Um, the goggles do come with, with its own uh, receiving antenna and again its battery pack. So we'll place those to the side. The Predator kit comes with a 250 megawatt um, Fat Shark transmitter. Now this transmitter is going to get attached to the quadcopter. Uh, the transmitter comes with a power, power cable on one side for powering the transmitter off the, the quadcopter's battery connection and it also comes with its own uh, video camera. Okay, this video camera is very small, it's very light, and it, it does have a uh, a dust cap for its lens and I tried this during the day indoors and compared it to the Hero 3 Black Edition using the uh, Fat Shark uh, goggles and I preferred the video quality of the Hero 3 over this video camera. So f for my installation I did not use the video camera that came with it, but I will explain how you can connect your Hero 3 Black Edition camera instead. Um, so to start with, for the powering of the um, unit, I'll show you how it's meant to be powered out, out of the box. Here's the quad cap copter, and one of the battery connections is this white connector and it could be used to power the video transmitter. Uh, the connection would be made right there. Okay, And what I decided to do was not to use this connection because I have enough trouble closing this phantom quadcopter door with just the yellow power uh, connector being made. And Trying to close the door with, with this additional hardware on here was something I didn't want to do. Now some have been able to do it by uh, uh, cutting a slot in, in, the, in the door that closes here for that cable connection. But I didn't want to do that. Instead, what I, what I did was power the video transmitter directly using an auxiliary power cable that's inside the quadcopter and I'll show in this video how that's done. So in order to do that we need to remove the original power cable that that comes with the the transmitter and we do that by just pressing down and removing the connector like that. There is a company called Ready-Made RC that that sells uh, a replacement cable for for powering it uh, with the auxiliary uh, connection and this is the cable here on one side it has the black connector it's the same type of connector that plugs into the uh, transmitter board and the opposite side is just a, a, a two uh, cable connection in this case it's a female and I also bought from the same company, Ready Made RC, um, this male counterpart that gets inserted like so. And then what you end up with is just uh, two leads for uh, making the connection to the auxiliary uh, power uh, 
cable that's inside the, the Phantom quadcopter. So we've replaced the power cable here, and I'll, I'll show, show how that connection is made later. Um, now we also, in my case, I want to use the Hero 3 uh, Black Edition camera, so we're going to remove this uh, connection from the transmitter for the video camera, and you can make a connection to the Hero 3 camera through its USB port on the side and ReadyMade RC makes a cable for that as well and this is the cable here it, it has on one side it has the, a black connector that plugs into the Fat Shark transmitter like the original cable did and on the opposite end is a mini USB connector that we can use to connect our Hero 3 camera so here's the Hero 3 camera here, and so we can make the connection like so, and now our Hero 3 camera is connected to the transmitter. Before we go any further, I'd like to explain one accessory that I've added to my quadcopter, and it's everything you see in black here, this black hardware. Uh, my quadcopter came with a bracket for mounting the Hero 3 camera and the bracket is, is shown as in clear here and it has a white bracket. This white part um, connected directly and firmly to the bottom of the quadcopter. And so on eBay I bought this isolation uh, and vibration dampening kit. It's everything you see in black here. It's basically uh, two black plates separated by a soft, soft rubber like shock absorbers and the idea is that any vibrations from the quadcopter would be dampened by these shock absorbers. It's very simple, it's low cost and, and it works. So uh, here's my Hero 3 camera. I would mount the Hero 3 camera in its original holder that comes came with my uh, quadcopter and I also use this little piece of foam on the back of the of the uh, Hero 3 camera to, to hold it in there firmly and you can see how it uh, the vibrations would be dampened. What I like about this particular unit is it doesn't extend too far down that the camera would would uh, would would be ex exposed below the base of the landing gear. You can see with the, the landing gear here that there's probably another uh, one quarter inch gap. Uh, okay, now I'd like to explain how you uh, get to the auxiliary main power cable that's uh, in the quadcopter. Uh, this is the cable here. I've I've rooted it through a pre-existing opening in the bottom of the quadcopter. Uh, it's actually located on the front of the quadcopter on the right hand side underneath the uh, right front strut, landing strut and some have been able to get to it to the wire by removing the soft plug that's in a hole here with a pair of tweezers. I tried that. I was able to remove the plug but I wasn't able to grab uh, the, the cable and pull it out. Others have been able to use the battery door and, and fish inside there and be able to poke the cable out that way. I didn't even try doing that. What I did instead was take the upper part of the quadcopter housing off um, and so I could see better what I was doing and that's how I, I fished it out and I'll show you that next. Um, this is the plug right here. Okay, and I'm going to zoom in so that you can see it better. Okay, this is where the plug comes out of the quadcopter you can see the white plug is still in there and so um, 
you might want to try first to remove that plug with a pair of tweezers and see if this cable is 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 very close there where you could grab a hold of it and pull it out that would be your your best try instead of having to take the the quadcopter uh, upper housing off now to do that you would be working with one Phillips screw here you'd have to remove that on all four corners and then there are two screws here and an additional screw here that you would need to use a, a small Allen wrench to remove. So there's actually one, two, three, four screws that would be re, need to be removed on each arm. And if you did that at all four arms, your uh, quadcopter top would just lift right off. Of course, you would have to remove um, the the blades uh, using the wrench that's provided with the quadcopter. And um, and then the the top would pop right off, and and you can have a look at some some of the slides shown here. Okay, so now I'm going to solder onto the auxiliary power cable from the quadcopter the, the short cable that I got with uh, a, a two-conductor connect, connector from uh, ReadyMade RC. And the leads on this uh, ReadyMade RC cable are red and black. I've applied two uh, small heat shrink tube, tubings to it and I'm going to add one more large one as well and from the quadcopter the color of the conductors are red and gray so we need to connect red to red and so I'm using my soldering iron now to do that okay I've slid the heat shrink tubing up over the uh, connect soldered connections there. I'm also going to slide this sh uh, short uh, orange heat shrink tubing and, and hit it with the hot air gun. Great, looks like a, a well made connection. So here is the cable that we just soldered on and what I'm going to do is pass it through to the other side between the plates of the black uh, vibration dampening accessory. And so it's on this side now and I decided to mount my transformer this way. I've placed a uh, double sided velcro on it and so I'll remove that right now so we can permanently install it for now and I'm decided to mount it this way I'm going to place it here so that'll be its position and now I just need to connect both cables I'll connect the power cable first that power connect cable con gets connected to the one we just soldered on so uh, there you go that connections made and then the other connector is to the Hero 3 uh, camera and so that plugs into the USB port and so we're all set. So here's the finished product we have the transmitter mounted on the bottom of the quadcopter with its power cable from the auxiliary uh, power cable of the quadcopter itself and we have the signal cable going to the USB port on the Hero 3 camera. So here's the completed unit and if I wanted to fly without the 
of Fat Shark goggles. All I have to do is disconnect the power cable, disconnect the camera cable, and then take the transmitter board off its Velcro and I could fly without the goggles. And I hope you enjoyed the video.